JP Morgan, Citi, and a single vendor just leaked thousands of sensitive files again. What if the problem isn't hackers, but the system itself? Another week, another banking breach. Mortgages, accounting records, legal contracts, you name it. It was exposed. And the craziest part? The bank's own systems weren't even touched. This isn't just a mistake. It's a wake-up call. And today, we're breaking down why legacy banks keep failing and how the Internet Computer, or ICP, the world computer, is redefining security from the ground up. And by the end, you'll see why this isn't just crypto hype. It's a completely different model of trust and data management. Let's start with the banks. On paper, they look secure. We are talking multi-billion dollar institutions with top tier security teams, firewalls, and auditors. But in reality, banks are patchworks. Every major bank depends on dozens of third-party vendors. Those vendors rely on other vendors. The moment a single endpoint is weak, the entire network is exposed. And take the latest breach, JP Morgan and Citi weren't hacked directly. The breach came through a subcontractor named Citus AMC. That's right, a billion dollar institution compromised through someone else's server. No malware, no dramatic hacks. Just a weak link in a sprawling supply chain. And this is an unusual. Historically, almost every massive banking breach has exploited the weak point in the chain not the core systems. Now let's talk about centralized data. Banks store mortgages, legal documents, financial histories in giant monolith databases. Hackers, they don't need to target the banks directly. They just hit the systems the banks touch. That's a massive attack surface paired with an enormous incentive. Traditional finance is basically a honeypot and everyone knows it. And here's where ICP flips the entire model. Because unlike banks, ICP doesn't just put banking on the blockchain, it removes the attack surface completely. There are no monolithic databases holding sensitive data, no chains of vendors to trust, no off-chain layers storing customer information. Because everything runs inside what ICP calls canisters. They are encrypted, tamper-proof, self-verifying environments where your data and compute live in a network where breaches aren't about weak passwords. They're about breaking distributed cryptography, and that's a completely different level of security. And another major difference is trust. Banks rely on it everywhere. Trust opaque vendors, trust audits, trust insurance, trust remediation timelines, trust that humans won't make mistakes. ICP replaces trust with verification, deterministic compute and verifiable execution and transparent logic. No humans in the middle. Trust is fallible. Verification is math. And here's the reality. Every time a brink gets breached, the media treats it like an accident, but the pattern is predictable. The architecture guarantees these failures will keep happening. ICP is an anti-bank. It's the first serious alternative to their technical model. It's a proof that you can build financial infrastructure where breaches aren't just rare. They are structurally impossible in the conventional sense. Think of it like this. Banks are castles built on sand. One weak plank in the foundation and everything falls. ICP is a fortress built on granite math, tamper-proof, self-verifying, and fully decentralized. This is what true Web3 interoperability looks like. Not just moving money around faster or cheaper, but rethinking how security, trust, and data integrity actually work. So why? Haven't we seen this on a larger scale yet? And I read this constantly in my comments. 
Adoption and integration take time. And most people still equate security with banks because that's why they've always been known. But every week, breaches like this remind us that the old model is failing. Predictably, repeatedly, and often quietly. ICP also opens the door for innovation beyond just security by removing dependencies on off-chain vendors and centralized data silos, developers can build applications that run entirely inside a self-verifying environment. That means faster, more reliable financial services, smart contracts that actually deliver what they promise, and interoperability without the endless excuses of traditional systems. Historical patterns suggest that systems built on trust alone always break. Distributed verification creates a structural advantage that's impossible to replicate with conventional banking. When you connect the dots, the gap between legacy banks and ICP is glaring. Banks aren't just occasionally vulnerable. They're built on a model that guarantees repeated failures. ICP just doesn't improve on this. It replaces the foundation entirely. No centralized databases, no opaque third parties, no weak links, just math. Distributed, encrypted, verifiable, unstoppable math. And days like these make it obvious. The contrast couldn't be louder. If you're finding this insightful, hit that notification bell, like, subscribe, share, and comment. And let us know what you think about the future of banking and crypto security. Legacy banks operate on trust, patchwork, systems, and centralized silos. Every breach, every leak is a reminder to us that this model is structurally flawed. ICP shows that security and reliability don't have to rely on opaque vendors or human oversight. Verification can replace trust and math can replace fallibility. For anyone interested in how financial infrastructure could evolve, this is, I mean, the clearest demonstration yet of what's possible. When you remove the weak links and let the architecture speak for itself, you know, it answers everything that needs to be told. So importantly, stay alert, stay informed and stay decentralized and I'll see you on the internet computer. Peace out.